Hello, welcome to the Thursday, November 11th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you had a large file that you needed to exchange and, well, it was too large for email, so you need to find some other way, but you didn't really have a good approved way to exchange large files like this. You may have found yourself using a private Dropbox account or something similar to exchange this file. And what Xavier is observing is that this shadow IT where employees are coming up with their own ad hoc solutions, often using free sites, sometimes sites that charge a small nominal fee, are now impersonated by phishers, where a phishing email arrives claiming to try to exchange a file. And when you're clicking on the link, you are seeing, well, not a well-known, but what looks like a legitimate file exchange site that then, of course, asks you for a username and password. Pretty sneaky and uh, certainly something where it's important that you proactively provide your employees uh, with tools that work in order for them to avoid having to use their own tools that then, of course, are not monitored and are not sort of integrated in your overall security architecture. And if you are using a Palo Alto firewall, including the Global Protect VPN feature, well, it's urgent for you to patch. A new vulnerability is patched in the latest release of PanOS, and you are vulnerable if you are running any 8.1 version before 8.1.17. Patched are two vulnerabilities, a buffer overflow and an HTTP request smuggling vulnerability. The second vulnerability enables exploitation of the buffer overflow that then, of course, allows arbitrary code execution on an affected device. Short of patching, you can also apply new threat signatures that uh, Palo Alto provided. IDs 91820 and 91855 should block exploitation. Again, you're only vulnerable if the Global Protect VPN is enabled. So if it's not enabled, I would still patch, but patching isn't that urgent. According to the Rendori attack team who disclosed the vulnerability uh, to Palo Alto, there are about 70,000 different uh, Palo Alto installs that are vulnerable. And talking about keeping your perimeter all nice and patched, Citrix did release an update for Citrix ADC, a gateway, and also SD-WAN OP edition. It fixes two vulnerabilities. One is an unauthenticated denial of service. I would call this important. Citrix actually calls this critical and probably because of the role that these devices often play in networks. The second vulnerability is also a denial of service, but limited to the management GUI, the Nitro API and RPC communication. So the device itself should still remain accessible otherwise, and the disruption is only temporary. And we got updates from Samba, the open source implementation of the SMB or Windows File Sharing protocol. It fixes seven vulnerabilities. Two of the vulnerabilities have a CVSS score of eight and higher. Uh, The first one would allow the compromise of Active uh, Directory. The second one uh, would also allow in Active Directory uh, privilege escalation. There are also some interesting vulnerabilities here. For example, if some of the uh, DZ RPC messages are being fragmented, an attacker could replace one of those fragments in some circumstances and it would still get authenticated because basically not each fragment is authenticated individually. But it's probably a more tricky attack and would also require that the victim is sending a specific request that would actually be exploitable. Now remember how you moved all of your access controls for your wireless network into the cloud to make it easier to manage? Well, 
HP Enterprise announced today that for its Aruba Central cloud networking solution, the repository that held all of those details was compromised. Apparently, an attacker had access to the data for 18 days. They had access to what HP identified as their network analytics and their contact tracing data. The first one basically is uh, analytics about the performance of Wi-Fi client devices. The second one also which client devices are then connecting uh, to what a Wi-Fi uh, system and uh, also proximity of Wi-Fi client devices. So in short, the attacker knows what devices you are using, who you are, and who you have been with. But HP does state that no security sensitive information was compromised. Well, in case you want to learn more about how to secure uh, these sort of distributed applications that uh, these systems are often built up upon, Turns out uh, Jason Lamb and myself, uh, we uh, do have a live stream coming up uh, today on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. So hope to see some of you there and we'll keep it uh, pretty simple. Lots of demos, no slides, just talking about some of the challenges that you run into with uh, these sort of cloud native-ish uh, applications that are distributed across different uh, services. And of course, you'll find a link uh, to this live stream in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.